Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to Post Cologne. Today I'm gonna to be unboxing three Middle Eastern fragrances from the House of Riffs. So let's jump into it. All right, so we are back with another unboxing first impressions video of three new Middle Eastern fragrances from the House of Rifts. I actually picked these up from a brand new discounter that's on the scene, Maison de Arabia. They reached out to me and said, hey, check out our website. We got a bunch of different Middle Eastern brands. And so I went and checked them out. Great prices on a bunch of brands that I have a really tough time getting my hands on here in Canada. They got Rifts, they got Le Gazelle, they got Rihanna, Arabiat, and Nasuk. And so I talked to them. I said, hey, hook me up. Let's send me some bottles over. So that's what they did. They sent me a bunch of bottles to try and test out some of their fragrances. Great prices on their website. I'm going to have links down in the description if you decide you want to check any of these fragrances out. And I'm really excited to try these riffs. I've heard nothing but good things about this clone fragrance house from the Middle East. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at three of them. So let's quit screwing around and let's get into it. All right. So first up from the House of Riffs, we have Riffs Avant Garde. Now you can scoop this bad boy up as well as the other two fragrances for $30 at Maison de Arabia. And I'm excited. I haven't tried any Riffs fragrances, so let's bust into this bad boy, see what we're dealing with. All right, so there we have the box presentation for Riffs Avant Garde. Nice thick cardboard box. Has kind of a nice smooth texture to it. Some nice kind of gold reflective design patterns on the front. All the necessaries on the back and it does have a slide off top like so. Revealing our bottle that's sitting in here. So just nice podium it sits in. So we have a nice cylindrical bottle, nice thick, heavy base to it. Really got some weight to this one. Cap on this is fairly cheap plastic and the atomizer on this bad boy takes a few pumps. That's a little weak. It goes far, but not too much, but it'll get the job done. But what does this smell like? All right, so right off the jump, just from smelling this in the air, from testing that atomizer, this is definitely a clone or inspired by of Prada Lome. Has that, that powdery violet sweetness, a little bit of spice that's in the air right now. So let's get this on paper, kind of dig into this a little bit more. Yeah, so right away off the paper, what you're picking up is that, that powdery, sweet style of violet, that very clean sort of feel going on to it. But it also has a little bit of black pepper in there, giving it that spiciness. A little bit of cardamom as well. It has a little bit of a sweetness to it to, with that fresh spicy vibe going on. And a little, little tiny hint of neroli that's in the back. So you get a little bit of that kind of, that brightness, that little bit of that citrusy style of neroli, a little bit of sweetness coming from that. But th for the most part, what you're getting is that powdery style of sweet violet working its way through. As it's opening up a little more, you're getting a little bit of amber and some cedar that's coming through. So you get a little bit of a woody accord, a little bit of a dryness that's starting to go through, but it's just kind of accentuating that powdery nature of that violet. A little bit of geranium perhaps mixed in there. Those spices are, are lingering, but they're not very prominent. They kind of died off fairly quick, but through and through this is a very dry, powdery, clean style of Prada Lome soapy fragrance. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. It's a Prada Lome clone for sure. Aromatic powdery has that little bit of sweetness that's mixed in there has that violety vibe going on to it a little bit of woods that are in the base but through and through this is just a soapy clean fresh aromatic style of fragrance but let's get to the dry down see how this kind of unfolds see how it kind of settles in and we'll go from there all right so we're back with the dry down of a riffs avant-garde it's been just about an hour let this settle down do its own thing this developed into a very nice fragrance. It was good in the opening, but now that this is dried down, the, the powderiness of that violet, the smoothness of some of the woods that came through, and those fresh, uh, fresh spicy aspects really come together quite nice. This is a very well-blended fragrance. Has a little bit more sweetness that's come through, so more of that kind of floral style of sweetness coming from that violet. Maybe a little bit of the geranium coming through too. It has a little bit of a rosy nuance, a little touch of green as well, but the woods that come through, nice, soft, and smooth with some dryness to it. They kind of accentuate and complement that soft, powdery style of floral violet. Oh, absolutely beautiful. Not quite a one-to-one -one with Prada Lome, but that's going to be the first fragrance you think of if you've smelled Prada Lome. It's definitely a clone of that, but a little bit of a twist to this. It's a little bit sweeter, I find, than Prada Lome, but it still has that same sort of texture to it, and it's just a really nice, clean, aromatic, sweet style of fragrance, and I'm really enjoying this one. I can't wait to get this one on skin. This is going to be a perfect office fragrance. This is going to be a nice, clean, casual style of fragrance and I'm really excited about this one. I think performance on this one might be fairly good as well because this is still pushing off the paper fairly well. So pretty pleased with this Riffs fragrance. So I'll probably do a full review on this one. I'll let you guys know how the performance is, but overall very impressed. That's Riffs Avant Garde. 
All right, so next up from the House of Rifts, we have uh, Blue Absolute. Now again, this one will run you at $30 at Maison de Arabia, and I'm assuming this is gonna be a blue fragrance, but let's find out. All right, so there we have the box presentation for Riffs Blue Absolute. Nothing special, just your typical kind of cardboard box, all the necessaries on the back, a little bit of kind of silver shimmery design on it, but let's see what the bottle looks like. All right, so there we have the bottle presentation for Riffs Blue Absolute. I'd have to say this is looking a little familiar, not quite there. Kind of a nice sleek looking bottle cap on this, a little bit of a heavy metal to it. So it does have some metal in there, but there is some plastic and the atomizer on this sucker. Oh, that's much better than the last one. This one goes pretty far, good distribution. Will definitely get the job done. But what does this smell like? Now I had my suspicions just based off the bottle presentation of this, the gradient that works its way through is sort of how the shape is, but now smelling it in the air, it's, it's definitely a Sauvage clone, but let's get this on paper, see if there's any kind of nuances to it. Yeah, 100% this is a Sauvage clone, not, not even really a twist. That's pretty much what they're going for here. Bergamot and pepper right up top, so you get that citrus, you get that nice kind of sharp nose tickling style of pepper that works its way through. Some Ambroxan, a little bit of lavender, some earthy patchouli that's in there, a little bit of that green style of like kind of aromatic geranium, a little bit of a kind of a rosy appeal to it, but that pepper is definitely there, giving it that kind of sauvage signature with that ambroxan and that kind of clean lavender that works its way in. As it's opening up a little bit, it's getting a bit of a dusty texture to it. The sweetness is coming forward a little bit more. The, the, the pepper kind of dropped off fairly quick. I'm not sure if my nose just got used to it really quick, but it, it's not as peppery as, as the sauvage typically comes across but the sweetness is there. It, it definitely has that Sauvage signature to it. Just maybe not as spicy as the Sauvage. And I should mention this is probably closer to the, the Sauvage um, EDT. Yeah, a nice, sweet, clean, aromatic, has that Ambroxan push to it. That little bit of that pepper that's still working its way through. Definitely, like I've said a hundred times already probably, definitely a Sauvage clone twist of that fragrance. So let's skip to the dry down and see how this kind of unfolds. I'll go from there. All right, so we are back with a dry down of Riff's Blue Absolute. Been just over an hour, let this settle down, do its own thing. Just like the last one, after this one's got to the dry down, it's gotten a lot better. It's really smoothed out quite nice. That pepper came back, so I think I may have gone a little bit nose blind at the very beginning during that initial opening, or it just may have just kind of come into its own and just surfaced a little bit more. So it has that spice that the Sauvage typically has. So it's a little bit more into that territory now with that black pepper spices coming through. Nice level of sweetness is coming through. There is a nice cedar that's working its way in the base. Has this kind of ambery sort of dustiness to it. A little bit of like of a fuzziness that's coming through. But through and through, this is a definite Sauvage EDD clone. I wouldn't even say it's a twist. I'd say this is getting pretty close to the EDT in terms of being a one-to-one. -one. Of course, it's not a one-to-one. -one. This is a $30 fragrance versus a several hundred dollar fragrance. But this is really good for a $30 fragrance. Oh, yeah, no, this really did settle in. I, the spice has definitely come back to this one. So I'm really impressed with this one. I think the quality on this is really quite nice. So I am quite impressed with this one. This might be one of the better Sauvage clones that I've come across in recent time across a few of these Middle Eastern clone fragrances. So I'm gonna get this one on skin, see how it performs. This is performing fairly well. It's not blasting off the paper, but it is pushing off fairly well still. So gonna get this on skin, do a full review, let you guys know what's going on with this one. But overall, really impressed. That's Riffs. Blue, absolute. All right, last, and hopefully not least, we're going with Riff's Carbon Noir. Now again, pick this up for 30 bucks at Maison de Arabia, and see what we're dealing with here. All right, so there we have the box presentation for Riff's Carbon Noir. Kind of a nice, kind of modern art, abstract design on the front, and a nice shimmery gold, a little bit of texture to it, a little bit of embossing on the side, but Overall, just a standard cardboard box. So let's see what the bottle looks like. All right, so there we have the uh, bottle presentation for Riff's Carbon Noir. Nice looking bottle here, actually. It's got a rectangular shape, nice thick base to it. Has this kind of metal inlaid plate here with the name of the fragrance, name of the house right there. And the cap on this is kind of nice. It has this like thick acrylic plastic with this kind of the black cap style on the inside. I don't know, it's a nice little added touch. Nothing too special, but. It is, it is a nice little little flare there. And atomizer on this bad boy. 
decent atomizer on this. We'll get the job done, but what does this smell like? So right out the gate, just smelling this in the air. This is a really nice kind of spicy, sweet, ambery style of fragrance in the air right now. This apparently is supposed to be a clone of Carolina Herrera's Bad Boy, and that is pretty much what I'm picking up right now. So let's get this on paper and kind of dive into this a little bit more. So right out the gate, off paper, it's a nice citrus spice medley that's working on right now. So it's got this tart style of bergamot, a very citrusy, sharp, zesty style of bergamot, mixing with some nice spices like a black pepper that's coming through. And it's also got a sweetness to it, like a cacao that's working its way through, kind of a dusty tonka as well. Yeah, really nice blend of the spices and that sweet accord that's working its way through. The bergamot is starting to fade back fairly quick. It was a very strong bergamot for the, the initial 30 seconds to a minute blast here. But now it's been a minute or so, this is turning into more of a spicy, ambery, sweet style of fragrance. A little bit of wood's coming through, and this is really starting to get a very dry accord to it. So it's dry, it has a sweetness to it, but it still has that spice that's working its way through. It is a nice balance between that spice and that sweet, that sweet note that's coming through. And I do like that, that dry texture that's coming through right now. Yeah, this definitely reminds me of Carolina Herrera's Bad Boy, if memory does serve. I actually don't own that fragrance. I have sampled it before. I just couldn't justify paying the price point for it. I just, it didn't blow my socks off back then. But this is definitely reminding me of that fragrance. With that sweetness, that spice, that, that sort of amberiness that comes through. So let's skip to the dry down, see how this unfolds. All right, so we are back with the dry down of Riff's Carbon Noir. Been just over an hour, just like the other ones. Let this settle down, do its own thing. And this one has also changed a bit, but I'm not sure if it's for the better, to be quite honest. It's kind of become a little diluted. There was a nice fresh spiciness, a nice level of sweetness, had that, that spicy, ambery sort of vibe going on to it that was a little bit exciting in the beginning, but now this has kind of died down and all those aspects have really just kind of gotten watered down, to be quite honest. It's not as spicy, it's not as sweet. It's just kind of sitting in like a boring, kind of mid-level to be quite honest. That's kind of what I found with the Carolina Herrera's Bad Boy. I just found it a little bit boring. The opening's a little bit exciting, but after that, it just kind of just, it's a little plain Jane, nothing too special. Nothing really stands out in terms of, you know, this is a really nice sweet accord or a nice spicy accord. It was just, just kind of boring. And so is this one, to be quite honest. And it's not pushing off very hard. This seems to be a weak fragrance as well as the scent accords being a little bit watered down and, and not too exciting. But I'll get this on skin. I'm not going to write this off. It's still a pleasant scent accord. I'm not saying this is bad or it's synthetic or cheap smelling or anything like that. It's just, it's just not that exciting. But we'll get this on skin, see how it reacts with my skin chemistry. We'll test it from there. But so far, this is, it's a like, if that's, but I don't know. It could be a bit of a flop, to be quite honest. We'll give it some time. We'll try it out. That's Riff's. Carbon Noir. All right, so there you have it. That's uh, three new clone fragrances uh, from the House of Riffs. My unboxing, uh, first impressions. I think I went two for three on this one. I don't want to crap on the Carbon Noir too hard, but it was just a little bit boring, to be quite honest. But the other two really surprised me, to be quite honest. And I'm not even like a huge Sauvage fan, but I was quite impressed with that Blue Absolute and that Prod Alone clone with the Avant Garde. Really impressed with that one so far. So good first introduction to the House of Riffs. I wanna hear from you guys. Are there other Riffs fragrances out there that I just need to try, I need to get my hands on? Comment down below. I love hearing from you guys. I love getting your different recommendations, taste and scent profiles, hidden gems. Appreciate you. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.